Well, greetings from Las Vegas and welcome to week six of the pro football season. The weather's cooling off. The leaves are changing. Fat Jack wore a clean shirt, so that's nice. We're going to have a good show. Beat the Odds starts right now. From our Las Vegas studios, this is Beat the Odds, sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas. Well, hey there, welcome inside our Las Vegas studio. I'm Dave Hall. And I'm Mariah Janos. It's week six, which means we're now about a third of the way through the season somehow. We've seen a lot of good and a lot of bad so far with San Francisco, Philly, and that Miami offense really in that good category. As for the bad, Denver, Carolina, and I'm sorry, Mariah, your team, New England. Dog, why you gotta do me like that? I'm sorry. Come on. <laughs> well, coming up on today's show, uh, you public betters have been cooking so far in October. We'll have the reasons why. Plus, Fat Jack, a perfect 5 0 with his best bets. Can he stay undefeated? See who he and Teddy like this week. Plus, I let out my true feelings on what's going on in New England. No, it's not pretty. And Brandon Marshall is back to play a little blind resume game with us. I'll be back in a bit. Dave, over to you. All right, and thank you, Mariah. The boys are back. Jack successfully made it home from London. We, we weren't sure if you would clear customs. Just barely, yeah. They asked me 50 questions, and I answered three of them right, and they let no, me in. They okay. said, get out of here. We've had enough. That's better than your high school and college <laughs> career. Right? <laughs> All right, Teddy, good to see you as well. So, Teddy, you get a start. Let's start with some of the surprises, stunners, maybe bad beats. Oh, there was a bad beat worth talking about from last week. Miami minus seven and a half, first half against the G-men. They're up 14 to three. They're driving for another touchdown before halftime. And oh, the 102 yard pick six goes back the other way. Maybe had enough time to drive the ball again. They kicked a field goal before the half. They win by seven. They're laying seven and a half. That was tough Ouch. if you had Miami first half in that one. When it comes to shockers though, really, we got to talk a little bit about New England. And Mr. Belichick, the most successful coach in pro football for the past 25 years. Now we don't give someone like Greg Popovich for San Antonio in pro basketball grief when his team goes down after an extended stretch. But for whatever reason Belichick's taking the heat for New England. Not his fault that his team might be the worst in pro football. It's a talent problem. Four, but he's the one England. picking the talent, and isn't he? His personality is very off-putting. I think sure. that helps. Sure, people like Pop more than they like right? Belichick. Right? Mar Mariah's off in the corner trying to defend her team right now. You were good with Tom Brady, not as good without him. I right, think. and he's picking the players, so it is on him. <laughs> one more thing worth noting. The public won big last weekend. We'll hear about it from a couple different places on this show. And that's not all that unusual for October. If there's one month of the year where the pro can, where the public beats pro football, it tends to be this month. Why? The pros are betting what teams were supposed to be. The public's betting what teams are. This time of year, teams are what they are. Yeah, I'll tell you though, I, I think that's got to reverse. I mean, I, I know I speak for a lot of sharp players that I'm tired of the general public doing so well. I mean, to start the year, it has not been good for the sharp player. Teams that have over 50% of the money are covering at a 62% clip. I mean, they're doing really, really well. So that general public money has really, uh, everybody's Kenny Rogers right now. Uh, and th this last week, it continued. Miami, Kansas City, San Francisco, uh, New York, uh, they all got it done versus the number. It makes, it, you're just playing the better team in a lot of these spots you've been making money, uh, that typically is not how you get it done. With the exception of October, it kind of reverses a little bit. I think that it's going to be contrarian this year. At least I'm hoping so because I can't bet with the public. And you, on the graphic there, favorites 37, 37, and 2 against the number. Yeah, Vegas knows. I mean, you're getting 37, 37, but when you're getting the general public to cover more times than not, the house is getting beat. When the house loses, sharp players typically don't do as well. Right. And, of course, when you talk about 37, 37, and 1, that's Vegas doing their job right. Yeah. <laughs> they know what they're doing they, in the desert, don't not they? Their, not their first do. rodeo. <laughs> It'll build those big casinos by paying out all that money. All right, fellas, you hang tight. We'll get back to you in just a bit. So we just heard October's been a very good month for the Joes. Now let's hear from those pros. Here's Mariah at the Superbook Westgate Las Vegas with more. Thanks, Dave. I'm here with EVP of Superbook Operations, Mr. Jay Cornegay. Jay, we are on to week six. Teams are kind of shaking out of where they're supposed to be. Maybe some surprises in the mix, but how was week five for you guys overall here at the book? 
Well, Saturday was really good for us. Uh, Sunday for pro football, not so much. You know, we had so many upsets on Saturday that really treated us well. And on the pro football side, we've been waiting for some upsets that just hasn't happened over the last couple of weeks. And one of those games on Sunday, I want to focus on, it was a preview, if you will, of the NFC Championship game, or so we thought it would be, with San Francisco and Dallas. San Francisco putting the beat down on Dallas. Does that kind of change the way they're viewed now down south? Absolutely. Everybody was anticipating a great game, uh, the t two top teams, but Dallas didn't show up. Now, San Francisco did, and they look like a complete team. But right now, a lot of people calling Dallas the September champs, but I think they're going to bounce back. They have too much talent not to. Now, I do want to talk about bye weeks. It is that time of the season where they start becoming a factor. How do they play into line setting? Well, bye weeks are a little tricky. I, and the only thing that really affects the line is uh, if a team has extra time to get healthy, if they can spend uh, you know an extra week to get players back that really does benefit which can affect the line and then there's other teams that rest and really have no excuses but come out flat after a bye week so it does uh, vary a bit we haven't seen any patterns over the years all right Jay thank you so much Dave we'll send it back to you in studio and thanks to you two as well. So feast or famine, and we're not talking about Jack and Teddy's eating habits, but we are talking about teams that could feast on the famished. Plus, we're going to do a blind resume test, see if you could pick out which unheralded defense is killing it right now. Brandon Marshall joins us next. With 524 total yards in week five, Miami broke the record for most yards through a team's first five games in league history. Whose record did they break? The answer, after the break. Beat the Odds is sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you which team previously held the record for most total yards through a team's first five games before being broken by Miami this past week. The answer, St. Louis in 2000, the greatest show on turf team with Hall of Famers Kurt Warner, Marshall Falk, and Isaac Bruce. Speaking of great teams, we have one here at Beat the Odds as well. Scan that QR code and it'll take you here to our website, BeatTheOddsTV.com, where you can laugh at Jack's goofy hat. And also, learn more about the team and bathe in all kinds of sports betting knowledge. You can also learn more about this guy, our champion, Brandon Marshall, who, by the way, sleeveless today. My man! Oh, yeah, I'm in the gym, you know, consistently, so, you know, you know. If, a, if a team needs a linebacker, I'm still available. 18-inch pythons, 12-inch <laughs> pythons. All all right, you want to play a little game? Let's start Let's by playing a little game. Absolutely. Blind resume game. Okay. All right, I've got an A, a team A, and a team B. Don't laugh at my B. I know it looks funny. All right, All right team A okay. expected to win their division. Okay. All right. Team B also expected to win their division. Mm -hmm. Team A, great defense. Team B, also a great defense. Okay. Team A, so far in five games, has given up 104 points. Mm. Team B, in five games, so far has given up 76 points. A or B, which one is Philadelphia? Mm, that's interesting because Philly had the number one defense last year, so I'm imagining that they have given up the least amount of points, so I'm going to go with Team B. You would be wrong. Oh. T Philadelphia is Team A. Really? Team B is actually New Orleans. Oh, wow. How about that? A lot of people probably New Orleans has always had a pretty good defense this yeah. year. They are really locking people down. Oh, yeah. No, they're locked in this year. You know, like Tyron Matthew, Cam Jordan, DeMario Davis, a lot of big-time names on that defense. Mm -hmm. They've been steady for years, right? Now that they have a good quarterback, a serviceable quarterback uh, in Derek Carr, we'll see where they can go. Yeah, so far so good. Definitely defensively. Okay, well, I'm going to have you put on your defensive head coach. Okay. Yeah, he he is a defensive head coach for high school here in Las Vegas, by the way. Uh, how in the world, forget stopping, how in the world do you even slow down San Francisco right now? Well, I mean, look, you got to look back to the NFC Championship game. Um, the only way to slow down San Francisco is if they slow themselves down when somebody gets hurt, right? <laughs> they have to play their eighth-string quarterback? <laughs> yeah, when, when, when Brock Purdy got hurt last year, I think that's the only way, you know, because right now they're hitting on all cylinders. The offensive line is elite. The receivers are elite. The, the, the running back, all the weapons are, are, are elite. The play caller is elite, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of tough to slow them down. If somebody gets injured, if they can stay healthy the, the entire season, they'll definitely make the big game. And I actually had them pegged to make it last year yeah. when Brock Purdy got hurt. Right, and, you know, Dallas supposedly has a great defense as well, and yeah. they just cut 
cut through them like they weren't even there. Oh, it was like a knife through butter. And the, yeah. and the thing about it was, right, you know, Dallas has played a lot of teams that don't have such a good record, you know. And so now when they played against a team that was yeah. fantastic, really stout, they couldn't do nothing with them. Which one of your biceps is bigger, A or B? <laughs> I'm going to go with A. They're both huge. All right, Brandon, thank you, sir. Well, speaking of uh, great defenses, uh, San Francisco, we were just talking about them, and Cleveland will be bashing heads this Sunday. Here's Jack with more on that matchup. So Brandon's giving away tickets to the gun show. So I think I probably need to join the club. I want, um, a, re I want a refund. Those are free for here. For me, you got to pay for his. Um, yeah, I think this time of year, especially as we go into October, it's important to figure out how to take advantage of the information we received over the first five or six weeks. And these teams that are feasting right now, that are leading the league in wins, that are leading, leading different uh, categories, we need to figure out when they're going to lose. It's easier said than done, obviously. But what we know is that the 72 Dolphins have been cracking champagne for the last forever because mm -hmm. these teams lose. Look at San Francisco and look at Philadelphia and the anatomy for teams that will beat them are going to be really good defenses that when the offenses sputter are able to keep games close and then do something late in the game. And both of these undefeated teams have that opportunity here. Cleveland has a number one ranked defense this season and you have Philadelphia uh, playing uh, New York and New York also very, very good defense. So it's never going to be easy before because these teams are undefeated. They, the perception is right. they're going to play really well. But if you're looking for an opportunity, you don't have to bet for them to lose. Look for the totals mm -hmm. to go under because then they don't necessarily have to get there. They just have to underperform the market. And you get one of those examples in both of these games this week, Cleveland, San Francisco under, and then Philly and New York under the totals. Feels like a classic letdown spot for San Francisco. Super high profile game Sunday night. Early game on Sunday, traveling to Cleveland. They're going to lose to somebody they're not supposed to. So sure. it always looks ridiculous right now, but you can take advantage of that because that line keeps growing and growing, especially if the general public does really well. So that's what we're trying to do is identify those spots. Yeah, and of course, you know, the favorites and the elite favorites tend to do very well against the spread. The struggling teams, we're talking feast or famine, not so much. I'm going to talk about three teams that have tanked so far ATS. Starts with New York, where the offensive line is absolutely in shambles. Danny Dimes on the run. And when you have a QB situation and an offensive line situation and a lack of skill position talent, those all come together. G-Men struggling mightily in early season play. Minnesota, another team that has gotten off to a very slow start. Of course, it's the team that went 11-0 in one-score games last year. Well, here we are in October. Last year was last year. 0-4 mm -hmm. in one-score games so far this season. And, of course, when you're looking at a team like Carolina, look, you have a rookie corner, uh, quarterback. You have cluster injuries in your secondary. You put those two things together, and you could expect some growing pains. All of these streams, the, G, the teams, the G-Men, Minnesota, and Carolina, struggling now, and I'm not convinced any of them are going to turn around right away. But the point spread, of course, is the great equalizer. And into October, that's what we're looking for, value as it relates to the line. So the general public takes the information they saw, they start betting those games, and you can then create some value or find some value in playing against those spots. We know how much quarterbacks mean to team. What about a receiver like a Justin Jefferson, probably the best receiver in the league? He's out for a while. Can losing him affect a point spread? Yes, but not that much. Okay. A quarterback can change a point spread three, four, five, six points. A wide receiver, a point, a point and a half at the most. Jefferson's injury this week, about a point. Yeah, outside quarterbacks, Kelsey's number one as far as relating to the point spread. A couple of those type tied in possession. Mm -hmm. Lots of big part of the offense. Um, but yeah, you're, you're always looking for spots where uh, you have quarterbacks that aren't playing well that you would expect to play better even though they started the year badly so that you're finding that value in the line. All right. Thank you, fellas. Well, he's gone from Mr. Irrelevant to Mr. Undefeated. Now Brock Purdy is getting the spotlight here on our show. Teddy and Jack will debate the Brock Purdy passing prop. Plus, is New England the worst team in pro football? Our super fan and super host, Mariah, will talk about that next. Before we take another time out with a touchdown on Sunday night, San Francisco's Christian McCaffrey notched his 14th straight game with a touchdown, tying Emmett Smith for the fourth longest streak in league history. Who are the only three players with longer touchdown streaks? The answer after the break. You're watching Beat the Odds, sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas.
welcome back. Before the break, we asked you which three players are the only ones with longer touchdown streaks than Christian McCaffrey and Emmett Smith. The answer, Hall of Fame running backs Lenny Moore, O.J. Simpson, and John Riggins, who each scored in 15 consecutive games. Millennial New Englander from ages 5 to 25, Tom Brady was my quarterback. So, in turn, all I knew was winning and praising the great Brady Belichick combo. From the moment Brady left New England, the focal point of every sports related conversation on the East Coast has been can Belichick win without Brady? Now, need I remind you, the demise of New England began before Brady even left. His last season there was nothing special. But with this current 1 in 4 start for New England and being out scored 72 to 3 in the last two games people are calling for Belichick's head and rightly so if this were any other coach the man would have been gone by now but Belichick has cemented his legacy as one of the most brilliant minds in the game and that legacy is what's keeping him employed a man that was once known for his ability to scheme around limited talent and missing personnel now looks like a complete buffoon it's making the narrative of Belichick can't win without Brady appear to be true when it's in fact not the issue isn't Bill Belichick the coach Bill Belichick the GM is the problem child here just because he selected a quarterback in the sixth round of the draft back in year 2000 that ended up being the greatest of all time that doesn't mean you know how to draft he got lucky with Brady and we all know it fast forward 23 years and New England has a kid under center Mac Jones handpicked by Bel Bill Belichick that has been benched the last two games an O-line that literally can't block and skills positions filled by personnel with zero skill all because Bill Belichick the GM is the one making these decisions now defensively the man knows how to pick them because that's his bread and butter but we're not here to watch a team keep games close with their defense we want a team that can win we want a quarterback that can drive down the field with an array of weapons surrounding him and for that quarterback to have more than one and a half seconds to get the ball out before he gets sacked so Robert Kraft, here is what I need from you. Relieve Billy of his general manager duties, bring in a GM that knows how to draft, and let Bill do what he does best, coach. I don't think anyone expected New England to have a strong season, but we surely didn't think it would all be over just five weeks in. All right, thanks, Mariah. Now it's time for our Beat the Odds showdown. Jack and Teddy will debate the Brock Purdy passing yards prop, which as of this moment is going to be about 230 yards, and they're playing Cleveland, right? Yes. All right, Teddy, you start us off. Sure. Now we're, we're assuming that the number is going to be in the 230 range. Unfortunately, we do not have an accurate number as we speak. Nonetheless, there will be a number for Brock Purdy, and we're going to take him under his passing yards. It starts with this, all right? Less than 30 passing attempts, four times in five games this year. He's not going to get a ton of chances to throw the football. Um, Cleveland's pass defense, can we call them elite? How about the best pass defense in the league so far this year? No easy yards to come by. And of course, this is the lowest posted total on the board this week. They're not expecting points because they're not expecting offense. I think we'll see a defensive struggle. I like Brock Purdy under his passing yards. So going from that, it seems like t we should be, if you're a Cleveland fan, we should be making our reservations here in Las Vegas for the big game. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I, it sounds like Cleveland's going to win. I do not believe that's going to happen. I think that San Francisco is going to have to move the ball. They're going to have to score points. And Brock Purdy's going to have to be a big part of that. The number one ranked defense for Cleveland is going to prevent the, the running game, first and foremost. If you beat San Francisco, you have to stop the running game. You make Brock Purdy beat you because league-wide, everybody kind of still understands that he is serviceable, not a great quarterback at this point. Because they do that, lots of screen passes, McCaffrey's big part of the game, lots of short passing game, and then letting the athletes do their, their job. I like over the total. I don't care what the number is. I think they get a lot more passing attempts because they can't move it running, and you're going to have uh, a lot more passing yards than I think the market predicts. All right, I'm going to have to call a timeout on this between you two. Thank you, boys. You two simmer down for a minute. We need you back here for the big finish, including best bets. Jack here's a perfect 5-0 this season. Can he stay undefeated? See who he and Teddy both like. That's next. Before we take our final timeout, Houston rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud has thrown 186 passes without being intercepted. That's the most consecutive pass attempts without being intercepted to start a career. Whose record did he break? We have the answer next. 
Welcome back. Before we went to break, we asked you who previously held the record for most pass attempts without an interception to start a career before it was broken this week by Houston CJ Stroud. The answer, Dak Prescott, who started his career with 176 consecutive passes without an interception back in 2016. My, how times have changed. I was just going to say he's making up for lost time, isn't he? All right, welcome inside our football cave. It is best bets time that Jack hasn't had this much pressure on him since he tried to squeeze into those pleather <laughs> pants back in high school. Yeah, I really had to lay down on my back. And I, but I tell you, we're not going to lose, hopefully. All right, because well, I'm rolling right now. We're going to give you a moment okay. to, to collect yourself. So, Teddy, why don't you get us started with yeah. your best bet? I'll do my best. Jack, of course, 5-0 <laughs> and to start the season. Between us, we're 7-1 and one with the best bets the last four yeah. weeks. So we're doing something right. See if we can keep it rolling. I want to talk about L.A. and Arizona. Right now, minus 7. Uh, for LA in this ballgame. Let me make this very clear. Arizona's defense, dicey, real dicey. Bad offenses are clicking against them. We saw the G-Men score 31 on Arizona and a half. We saw Cincy last week. They had one TD come to the game. They scored three. I worry about that defense. And it's a playmaker mismatch. LA has a bunch of them, especially with Cooper Cup back in the lineup. Now, LA's had some second half struggles, so you may want to look at a first half wager, minus three and a half for them here, but I think they take care of business against Arizona. Yeah, I, I think when we're talking about totals, and I've been really hot on the totals, and by the way, if I go undefeated, do I get like a trophy or a cinnamon roll or something? You get some leather pants. I, you know what? I, that's just what I need. And a foot rub from Teddy. Win-win, <laughs> right? Yonder. So we're going to go over in the uh, Seattle-Cincinnati game. I like teams coming off by to improve uh, off a buy to improve offensively. Seattle's doing that. They also don't have the pass rubs up front to get to Burroughs. Cincinnati, 32 points last time out, uh, playing better. Looks like Burroughs is healthy enough that he's going to go and if you can't get there with the front four you're going to have to bring blitz packages or you're going to give up some passes down the field let's go over the total in the cincinnati seattle game all right good stuff thank you fellas thank you mariah who is heading off to new york for some coverage next week thank you mariah you guys have a great sunday of football